Hey, um, this is the last of the Mauser series and it's actually probably the least important of the Mauser series because now we're into K98 rifles and now it's up to you what you want to spend on them and we're just going to show you some real quick differences. But the big difference is this is a Yugo 98. It has the prejudice stamp on it. There is no mechanical difference between this and any of these Nazi Mark 98s. All right. This one has the hood sight on it, which if I have any brains, I'd probably put them on all my other ones. This is not mine, this is Stan's. But the big thing is, what I'm trying to tell you is, these are all big money guns. These four especially, because they have the Waffen marks and the, the date codes on them. This one is the least valuable, probably other than this one's been restocked, but th this one's the least valuable because the German markings. Big money. Now, I want to show you something that we I thought about is let me pull this one up. This one's been restocked. This was literally a hunting rifle that I took out of the hunting stock and I put most of the German stuff on. You will notice that on all these rifles, um, could you grab one stand randomly? Sure. The Germans mix match and put it up right yeah. here. The Germans mix match stuff all the time. And that isn't an exclusion on what you should buy. This is a late war. This is early war, all right? This, But this is a late war stock because it has the heel on it and this one doesn't have a heel on it. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is we're gonna stand these up. I'm gonna stand two up and Stan's gonna stand two up. And Dave, if you could, could you pan the manufacturer's rings? Sure. This, as Dave pans, I'm going to keep talking here. This is what makes your 98 worth so much money. And if you're buying a 98, you should probably look at the manufacturer's code. Sometimes it's a number, sometimes it's a three digit code. And then look up production numbers because that's going to set the value of the gun. Not whether or not it has a post war stock or a laminated stock or whatever because. All that can be replaced and was readily replaced by the Germans while they used them. Did you get all them in there, David? I believe so. All right, we'll put these back down. So we're going to take this out in the range, and I'm going to fire the Yugo gun and one of the um, Nazi marked ones. This is a short video. If you're buying one of these, you're going to pay big money for them. It's up to you how much money you want to invest on them, but you should probably look at the manufacturer's codes. But you're not going to take the beating like you would on a Yugo gun. And as long as you're not up in the $3,000 range and you're anywhere between say $800 to $1,800, and that would vary on codes, that's what these guns are worth. Unfortunately, they shouldn't be, but that's what they're worth. I hope this series shows you something. We're going to be out on the range in a second. This is the last section of the Mauser video and we've shot in every other one. There's nothing special about shooting these other than their K98. So we're going to shoot this BSW. It's dated 1938 with a stripper clip. So with all this snow and it's about what 20 degrees outside? About that. I think we're at Stalingrad. Five rounds out of a Nazi mark. Now we're going to go to the Yugo. And since Yugos weren't used at Stalingrad, they didn't even exist at the time. We're up in the Balkans now. See how I transferred across the, the globe like that? And it's a cold winter in the Balkans. And by the way, the sight at the hood cover adds a lot to this rifle.
There you have it, shooting two K98s.